What's going on, everybody? It's Parker Fox coming at you from the Waterwave Podcast Studio here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm so excited to bring y'all episode one of my new podcast called The Double Down Podcast, presented by Waterwave. This podcast is special to me because it's all about the journey that us as athletes take, overcoming adversity and just dealing with things that come up in your life and, and how, you, how you approach them mentally, emotionally, and physically. Um, today's episode is just an introduction. It's the start of this whole thing, um, and it's super exciting for me. Uh, we're up here early in the morning getting this thing filmed at the Waterwave Podcast Studio, um, and I'm just excited to get this thing going. It's been a long time in the works. You know, we've been we've been thinking about this idea for a long time. So I want to give a special shout out to Waterwave for making this thing happen here in their podcast studio. Um, you're gonna see me a lot more here in the studio. You're gonna hear me on the mic um, on all platforms, um, and I'm just excited to get this thing going. So I want to start. Just want to start out with an intro um, about myself uh, for you, uh, you guys that don't know me. My name is Parker Fox. Uh, I'm from Matamidi, Minnesota. Um, and I am a current basketball player at the University of Minnesota, um, where I am in my sixth year. Uh, we're going to explain all that kind of stuff later, um, but going to start at the beginning. Um, who I am. You know, I grew up in Matamidi, Minnesota, uh, 20 minutes east of, of the cities, um, in a really loving, uh, awesome family. Grew up playing all the sports, grew up cheering sports, grew up, you know, just being a part of, uh, of sports. Sports have been in my life, my whole life. And um, I knew I wanted to play sports at a very young age. Um, but it wasn't until high school until I really got serious about sports um, and specifically basketball. Um, basketball uh, was something I fell in love with at a really early age, but it didn't really develop into something very serious until about my junior year. Um, of high school. You know, I knew I loved the sport growing up, but once I hit my junior year, I was really able to, um, you know, expand and grow and, and, and tune into my true love and passion for the sport. Um, you know, once I, once I kind of found that passion, I, uh, I just put the work in, um, you know, had a really good junior year, went on to have a pretty good senior year. And then from high school, I committed to Northern State University in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Um, for those of you that don't know about Northern State University, it's a Division II uh, university in South Dakota uh, with a rich basketball history, with a rich, um, you know, environment, with uh, crazy fans, with a um, lot of basketball culture. Um, so I was super excited to go to Northern. Um, but Northern was just kind of part of my first journey uh, in, the, in this basketball world. You know, like I said, I knew I wanted to play basketball and I knew basketball was something that was going to be there for me um, for hopefully the rest of my life, whether it was, you know, playing the sport or whether it was working in the sport. I knew basketball was going to be something that I love to do um, and, and, and it was going to carry me throughout my life. Um, so I attended Northern State where I um, graduated from Northern State in four years. Um, in my last season at Northern State, I was, a, um, I was an All-American, an academic All-American. I was uh, first team all-conference, conference player of the year. And I was able to have um, you know, a really great uh, last year at Northern before I decided to enter the transfer portal. Um, for those of you that don't know what the transfer portal is, uh, it's basically a, um, a website that you can go into and... Um, teams can teams can recruit you again so basically you're a, kind of a free agent in the NCAA realm and and when I decided to do that um, it was kind of a whirlwind of emotions and and excitement and I heard from almost every single school in the country and I was just uh, incredibly blessed um, to be able to to be a part of um, you know this process with all these coaches and talk to these amazing basketball names and basketball minds and um, it was honestly just kind of a blessing for me because I love the sport I loved all aspects of the sport and I got to I got to learn through coaches and I got to learn through film and so I spent my time just researching and trying to figure out what my next university was um, and some people will say well you went to Northern for four years how did you you know still have eligibility um, my first year I redshirted so I got that year back and then COVID gave me a year back. So I'm sitting in the transfer portal with two years of eligibility, which makes me a pretty high target. Um, I was listed on ESPN as one of the top 100 transfers in the country. Um, you know, I was a highly sought after guy in terms of, you know, getting to the next university. And, and that's where um, that's where my journey kind of starts. Um, so I released 
that I would be committing to the University of Minnesota, um, my dream school, somewhere I, I grew up cheering. Uh, University of Minnesota is 20 minutes from, from where I grew up. Um, so I just couldn't turn down the University of Minnesota. You know, my, uh, my recruiting pitch from Coach Ben Johnson was, you know, imagine going somewhere else and thinking about what it would be like if you were at the University of Minnesota. And when he said that, I just uh, I couldn't go anywhere else. Um, Minnesota is my home, and I'm super proud and honored to uh, be able to you know rep the University of Minnesota. But this is where my my journey really begins, and this is where the podcast really begins. Um, this is the podcast isn't about where I came from in terms of, of school and basketball. This podcast is is all about adversity and fighting through adversity. Um, so I, you know, I committed to the University of Minnesota, um, and then a few short days after, I was uh, working out in basketball practice. Um, and I'm going to get ex- extremely specific here because that's what we want to do on this podcast. We really want to dive into, um, you know, the stories and the emotions and every single thing you feel um, in terms of um, injury and in, in terms of adversity. Um, so I was in practice up in Aberdeen. This is before I was just set to graduate um, from the university, uh, from Northern State University. And I was going through a workout and I jumped up off my right leg to throw down a dunk in the workout. Um, I landed on my left leg and, and I felt my knee buckle a little bit. Um, you know, I didn't think too much about it. I was kind of just like, oh, you know, I get I get little bumps and bruises all the time. It's just a part of the sport. So I tried to take a step to run back on defense. And when I did, my leg kind of gave out. And I was like, oh, that's not good. Um, you know, I didn't have any pain. So I was like, you know, I'm going to just bounce around and, and go sit down over in a chair and, and figure out, you know, if um, if this is something I need to be done for the day on or if I can just take a quick little break and get back in there uh, and continue to uh, work out. Um, so then I sit down and, you know, I could kind of move my knee around a little bit. So I was like, oh, this probably this probably isn't good. I started to kind of kind of get a little bit more stressed, um, kind of be like, OK, what the heck is going on here? Um so I asked my coach uh, if I could hop in the car and head over to the training room. So I hopped in the car uh, with my coach, my assistant coach, and we um, headed, we headed over to the training room. Um, you know, I was actually super, um, you know, I was super not really worried. You know, I was, I was feeling really good in the car and I feel as like, oh, I'm going to be all right. This is going to be good. Um, you know, I'm going to be all right. The trainer's going to look at it. We're going to put some ice on it. I'm going to be, be able to work out and lift in the morning. Um, so I get to the training room and, and I can walk perfectly fine. So I'm like, if I can, if I can walk fine, I'm, I'm going to be all right. You know, I'm a, I'm a type of guy, you know, super optimistic kind of guy, glass half full kind of guy. And um, I was like, you know, I just I just committed to Minnesota. I'm on top of the world right now. Nothing could nothing could bring me down. Nothing could, uh, you know, make this day worse. You know, I'm 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 a division one basketball player now. Like I, I'm I quote unquote made it to a point where um people know my name and I'm super excited to put myself out there and show the world what I can do. Um, so I get in the the training room and and my trainer, my trainer is like, what the heck happened? Like, what were you doing? I was like, Oh, I was just working out, just landed on my leg. Can you just check it out? Um, so they did this, this test that, you know, probably a lot of my future guests will talk about. It's called the Lockman's test. It's a, it's a test to see if your ACL is intact. So they did this test to see if my ACL is intact and the trainer, the trainer didn't say anything, which kind of made me, kind of made me a little nervous. You know, I didn't really know what exactly that meant. And he called over another trainer and he's like, Hey, could you come take a look at this? And the other trainer, she came over and she took a look at it and, and felt it out. Uh, you know, they had a conversation and, and this whole time I'm, I'm starting to starting to get a little nervous. You know, I'm starting to have some feelings in my head, like, okay, this could be something more than just a little tweak, you know, this could be something that I might have to, you know, really be serious about. Um, so they told me, um, you know, they, they got together as a group and they came back and they told me, um, we think you, uh, we think you tore your ACL. Um, man, it still, it still gives me, it still gives me shivers to this day. Um, just being where I was at and, you know, where I planned on going and, um, the emotions flooded me. Um, it was, it's honestly still hard to talk about to this day, but you know, the emotions just came over me and, and I grabbed a towel and I put it over my face and I just, just took a minute and, um, not knowing what to feel or how to feel it or why I was feeling it, but the emotions just ran over me and, you know, I, I sobbed for 
a good, a good amount of time, you know, I was able to be consoled by my trainer and, and, um, be told that this isn't for certain. They want to go get an image. They want to get an MRI uh, and make sure, uh, because you know, you can't, can't exactly tell until you go in there with, um, you know, professional machinery and, and see that the, you know, the ACL is actually torn. So I headed over to the hospital, um, with a pretty good mindset. You know, I was, you know, I listened to what the, 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 you know, the athletic trainers had told me, but at the same time I was like, you know, I, I've heard of miracles before and, and maybe, you know, this is just a, a quick little fight to show me how real this is, but I'm going to be all right. But so I sat down in the MRI machine and, and put the headphones on. And, and for those of you who haven't been in MRI machine before, it's a very loud machine and it's, you know, pretty daunting. It's a pretty scary machine, um, that you have to sit in for about a half hour and you can't move. Um, so that whole time I just, I just sat there thinking, um, you know, what is this going to be? What does this entail for me? Um, and you know, trying to be as positive as possible. Um, it's tough when you go through something like this. And I, and I know our future guests will talk about the different emotions that are running through your head. Um, but I get out of the MRI machine and, and I go home and, uh, they told me the, you know, the doctor is going to be calling me at some point today to, to let me know what the injury is. Um, so I'm waiting for that call and I'm sitting there and I finally get a call from a, from a random number. So I'm assuming it's the, it's the doctor. And, um, the doctor calls me and he says, Parker, you tore your anterior crucial ligament, which is your ACL. You also tore your lateral and your medial meniscus. So I ripped up just about everything in my knee that, you know, makes an athlete able to do what they love to do, what they, you know, can do, um, as an athlete. And, um, when, when I got that call, it was, uh, it was the, the confirming that I didn't want to hear. And, um, I didn't have as many emotions, you know, as I did the first time that I heard the, the fact that it could be true. But, um, I told the doctor that I appreciate him looking at it. I'm going to give my family a call and, uh, I called my mom and I just couldn't, I couldn't stop. I couldn't control my, my emotions. And, you know, I told her, um, that I tore my ACL and I'm going to be out for nine to 12 months and I have to have surgery. And, and this whole process is, is going to delay my, my start of my time here at the university of Minnesota. Um, frankly, I was a little scared if, you know, the university of Minnesota would still want me or if any other school would still want me, you know, who's, who's going to take a division two kid with with a torn ACL. You know, I saw the tweets. I saw people hating on me. I saw negative energy all across social media. You know, why would you, you know, eventually, why would you take this kid, this D2 kid with torn ACL? And those are the things that, you know, went through my head. And, um, but my mom told me, um, something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. And, and is so special to this day is, you know, you can do this because of the type of person you are and how motivated and how hardworking you are. She said, you know, she told me a lot of other people couldn't do this, but she's like, I believe you can because I know who you are. And from right then and there, it motivated me. Um, it got me in the, the training room the next day to, to get ready and prep for surgery um, and all that kind of stuff. And um, my family, my mom, my dad, and my brother are, are my biggest supporters. And they, um, they were there for me the whole way, um, as well as Coach Johnson. You know, I had to call coach Johnson here at the university of Minnesota and let him know. And I had, you know, I had to let him know that, you know, I was, I was probably not going to be able to play for him this next year. Um, and I didn't know what his response was going to be, you know, as, as a coach, he can, he, you know, I haven't signed anything yet, so he can say, Hey, we don't want you anymore. Um, but that's the opposite of what he did. He stayed right by my side and, um, you know, he supported me more than anybody else and, and, and knew the type of guy I was and the type of guy that I was going to be in the program. And, um, you know, he wanted me there. Um, and I'm forever grateful for that because, um, this place is special to me. The university of Minnesota is special to me and I'm so honored to be here. Um, so, you know, I go about the pre-surgery business and I get my surgery done and, um, you know, don't need to ramble on about, um, all the, the physical therapy. Cause we'll talk about that in future episodes, but, um, it's a crazy mental, emotional, physical battle, um, for a year long time. Um, but I get past it. And I'm 14 months post-surgery. I'm ready to go into my sixth year of college uh, at the University of Minnesota. And I'm in practice, going through a normal drill like we do every single day. Um, 
mind you, my left leg, my torn ACL leg feels great. You know, I'm back. I'm better than I ever was before. I'm as athletic as I ever was. I'm as fast as I ever was. But something happens. Um, I go to pass the ball and my right leg buckles a little bit. And it's the same, you know, the same feeling that I felt before on the left one. So, you know, when I felt it on the left one, I didn't know what the feeling was and I was confused. But in this practice on the right one, I knew exactly what I did and my eyes opened wide and I looked at my coach and he looked back at me and he was like, what was it a good pass? And I said, nah, I tore my ACL. And he looks at me and, and in a way that I'll remember forever, you know, kind of doubting me, but also like, ah, oh, nah, man, get out of here. Like, that's not true. You know, and but also kind of believing me because I've done it before. And I was like, nah, man, I did. You know, and he's like, stay positive. Like, everything's going to be good. We're going to be all right. And I get in the I get in the training room and, and my um, my new athletic trainer here at the University of Minnesota does the exact same test, the Lockman's test. Um, and he didn't give me the same response as my first trainer did. He um, he's stayed pretty stoic and told me, let's go get an MRI. And so I go through the same process that I went through 14 months ago. I get in the MRI machine and I wait for a call from the doc. Um, I receive a call from the doc um, and he told me that I tore my anterior cruciate ligament in my right knee along with my lateral and my medial meniscus. So the exact same thing that I did to my left knee 14 months ago was just redone to me to my right knee. Um, and the emotions flooded. You know, I'm a... I'll admit I'm, I'm an emotional guy. I, I play with emotion on the court. If you ever see me play, um, I love the game and that's what made it hurt so much is the fact that I'm going to have to be out of the game, um, for man, for, for a long time, uh, you know, another 12 to 14 months. Um, and that, you know, that emotion that floods over you and, and we'll talk about it with, with future guests here on the pod is, is something that's kind of undescribable and it's something that you can't feel unless you, you go through it. Um, you know, there's doubt, there's second guessing, there's, you know, every emotion you could possibly feel, you feel it in a matter of seconds. Um, you know, and then, and then I get on the phone and I call my mom and I tell her, you know, I'm, I'm crying already. And she's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I was like, I, I did it again. I tore my ACL again. And, you know, she just breaks down and, you know, I, you know, I told her, I was like, I'm going to be all right. Like I'm made for it. I'm going to be all right. And I'll remember forever what coach Thorson told me. He's like, he's like, you're different. You know, this, 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 this is the thing that a lot of people can't do, but, but you can do it because you're different. And from that moment on, I was like, you're right. Like I can. And I, I talked about it with my family, my mom, my brother, my dad is like, I said, they're my biggest support system and, and they're behind me every single way, step of the way. So you know, I, I did the same thing. I started grinding. I started getting ready for surgery. You know, there's, we'll talk about it more, but there's a lot of things you got to do pre-surgery to get ready for, you know, going into an ACL surgery. And I killed it. You know, I knew I'd kill it because it's, it's something I love. And, you know, a lot of people told me is, you know, after I got my surgery, it's like, is this it for you? Like you're going into your sixth year of college basketball. Like you have two torn ACLs, like you're just going to hang them up and get a job. And, and I, and I laugh at that. And, and, and it's, it's a joke to me. It's like, no, nah, man, this is, this is what's making me, you know, this adversity is, is what's making me into be the player that I'm going to be, whether it's here at Minnesota, whether it's overseas, whether it's in the NBA, whatever it may be, like, this is my dream. This is my life. Like, you know, when you, when you're growing up liking sports, you know, some people go from liking to loving sports and then some people go from loving to living sports and, and I live basketball. Basketball is my life. Um, so quitting wasn't an option. So I went into my, my second ACL surgery on my right knee. And, um, currently I'm about 11 weeks out from surgery, um, and feeling awesome, feeling better than I felt on my left knee at this point. And, uh, I'm just grinding and I'm working and I'm super excited to get this podcast going and, and tell you guys all about injury, all about adversity you know, sharing the different emotions that come with it. Um, you know, we want to, we want to dive into, to a real mental, emotional side on this podcast with our guests. And, um, you know, obviously the physical side is brutal. Um, I lost 30 pounds, both surgeries, you know, I, I lost all muscle in my leg. I, you know, you lose everything, you lose all your athletic ability. Uh, so the physical side is brutal in terms of, you know, fighting it back and getting it back up. But 
you know, we on this podcast and the Double Down podcast, we want to focus more on the mental emotional side and, and what athletes go through in terms of, of feelings. Um, you know, a lot of times in, in our sport, um, you know, a lot of people think we should just be out there playing the game and, and doing it for entertainment purposes. But, you know, we're human, we're people, we are men and women in this sport that, um, you know, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, whether whatever sports, we're going to have a lot of sports on the pod. Um, but we feel things and we have emotions that come through not only when you're told that you have an injury, but the process of the injury itself. You know, I'll, I'll share a story, for example, um, on my second surgery, it was about six weeks in after surgery and I was working on bending my knee. So when you come out of surgery, you can barely bend your knee and you can barely straighten it. It just kind of stays there flat. Um, so six weeks after, you know, you're working every single day to bend it and I could bend it to about, you know, a hundred degrees. And I remember bending it up to my, to my butt and it just, you know, it just being painful and I just broke down and it wasn't the pain that broke me down. It was all the thoughts and emotions that ran through my head. It's like, Oh man, I got to go through this 12 month process again. I got to fight my ass off every single day to get back. Um, you know, it's the overwhelming sense of, you know, how hard this task is, but people don't understand it. You know, the, the, the outside world doesn't see the little work you put in, but at the same time, you don't want them to. For me personally, that is, you know, I've, I've grown up on, you know, a lot of different sayings and a lot of different, um, feelings and, and one that holds true to this day through my, uh, through my injury process and through my recovery process is work hard in silence. Let your success be your noise. Um, so that's, that's my biggest thing that I, that I focus on is when I go into the gym and when I'm with my trainers and my therapists and, and my athletic, uh, strength conditioning coaches, like I'm working my tail off because I know where I can go and I know what my success can bring me. Um, and that motivates me every single day. Um, so that's kind of the last story on my injury story. Um, but the guests are going to share theirs. I'm going to also tap in with them. Um, but this is episode one of the podcast. Just wanted to come on and give you guys a little introduction. I also want to take a quick pause to mention that we are looking for athletic theme brands and companies to support and help grow the pod with me on my new podcast journey. Uh, so if you are interested, make sure you reach out to me um, through all my socials. Uh, they'll be found on uh, the descriptions and on the screen um, and all that kind of stuff. But you can find me, Parker Fox, and the, the Double Down podcast. Um, and if you're interested in supporting the pod, we would love that. Um, but I'm just going to wrap up with um, future guests. We got um, next week, we have a special guest. I'm not going to name it yet, uh, but we have a super special guest, a, a guy that's super close to me, a guy that's super close to the, um, you know, the, the University of Minnesota. Um, and we're super special to have uh, him on uh, episode two of the podcast. So if you're hearing this now, make sure you have your, your notifications on, you turn that bell on and, and you're ready for episode two of the pod because um, it's going to be a really special story, uh, a story that is kind of similar to my story. Um, but yeah, so that'll be, that'll be episode two. It'll come out next week. Um, and I just want to wrap up with uh, thank you. Thank you to everyone who, who made this possible. This is only the beginning of a journey that I hope lasts for a very long time. Um, this is something that I'm passionate about. Uh, I'm passionate about getting on this mic, uh, telling my story, uh, and, and motivating the next group of people that could possibly go through, um, an injury that seems like is the end of the world, but I assure you it's not, I assure you it's not the end of the world. It's just a part of your journey. It's just a part of your story. And I know that adversity makes a human stronger because I've been through it not only once, but twice. And I know how special it can be, um, when you, when you, when you're done with it, when you overcome it. Um, so like I said, this podcast is all about emotion. Uh, it's all about mental health. It's all about, um, the physical grind that it takes to overcome adversity and injury in sport. And I'm super excited to be bringing it to you guys from the water wave podcast studio here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, so with that being said, I'm signing out on episode one. It's been your boy Parker Fox and the double down podcast. And I'm so excited to start this journey with you guys. Peace out.